Logos Bible Software has a really amazing feature called the Reverse Interlinear, which has made accessible Greek and Hebrew uh, content to people who are using their English Bible translations primarily. Uh, it's also a very helpful tool for uh, Greek and Hebrew scholars who uh, perhaps are, are wanting to use uh, English translations as part of their exegetical process. Uh, I'd like to use this video screencast to uh, give a little bit more insight into how to access the reverse interlinears, what they actually are, how they work, and some of the payoffs of using them. Uh, so be to begin this, let's go ahead and open an English Bible translation. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open the ESV, and uh, to do this I'm just going to simply go to the command bar, type ESV, and then hit enter to launch the ESV. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and, and make the ESV take up the full layout just to provide more uh, screen real estate and make this a little bit bigger. Uh, next I'm going to actually turn my ESV to John 3.16 and we're just going to take a look at a, a couple of words in here and how we can use the reverse interlinears uh, to leverage uh, Greek uh, ling linguistic uh, content and information. Uh, now for those of you who know, a, a typical interlinear uh, is usually has the Greek or the Hebrew text on top, so it's a Greek or Hebrew Bible really, but then has information underneath that text that gives you uh, English glosses and definitions and, and further information that will help the reader of the Greek or Hebrew Bible to understand uh, and, and translate a little bit faster because they have those English helps below. Well, the reverse interlinear just goes the opposite. It has the English translation or the translation on top with the original language underneath. So you can actually begin with the English as your base text and then have the Greek or Hebrew underneath as the underlying informational text. So the way that you can actually view the reverse interlinear within Logos Bible software is actually right within your English Bible resource itself. Now there are two main buttons that you need to be uh, aware of when using Logos, uh, the, and those two are in the resource toolbar. The first is the inline interlinear button, and we're going to click that here in just a second. But there's also another way to view the, the reverse interlinear, and that's through the interlinear button up in the toolbar. So let's go ahead and click the inline interlinear button. And you're going to see a drop down menu with lots of options. If we check the box inline, this will actually turn on the inline interlinear. And then we can actually select all the different types of information that we want to to be visible. The first one here is manuscript. If we click manuscript, you're going to see now that we have Greek words underneath the English text. The manuscript version or the manuscript information is how the Greek word appears in its inflected form within the actual Greek Bible. So this is how if you were reading a Greek Bible you would be seeing the words as they appear. And notice that each Greek word underneath actually has a little number next to it and that's telling you what order, what word order these Greek words actually appear within the Greek text. So if we were reading this as a Greek interlinear uh, we would be seeing this word, hutaos, uh, would be the first word that appears in this verse but in the reverse interlinear, the word gar is first because the, it corresponds to the English word for, which appears first in English. So you can kind of get a feel for how the Greek text goes while still reading in your English translation. Now if you don't know how to read Greek words, or you don't know the Greek alphabet or Greek pronunciation, uh, you can get a manuscript transliteration added underneath that, and this will give you the um, English letters so that way you can actually read or sound out Greek words. Uh, you can also see the lemma underneath, so this is not the inflected form, but this is the dictionary form or the lexical form of the Greek word. So if you were to look this up in a Greek uh, lexicon, this would be the word that you would look this up. So if we wanted to look up the word loved, we would look it up under agapao rather than agapason. Um, but we can also get our transliteration for our lemma as well. Uh, just like we did with our manuscript form. We can also see root information if we want to see the root of a word or what uh, common family of words these uh, individual lemmas are coming out of. Uh, we can see root transliteration. We can also see morphology, so if you want to get the parts of speech and what kind of verbal inflected form this is taking, you can see that information down here in its, uh, in its abbreviations. 
We can also look at Strong's numbers that are attached to these, as well as Launida numbers uh, under each of these words. So there's a ton of information that's available to us uh, within the inline interlinear. Now more than likely as you're reading, you're not going to want to have all of this information available to you because it gets a little bit cluttered, but you can pick you know, the best form that works for you uh, if you wanted to use this feature. Typically when I'm using the inline interlinear, I turn off all the transliteration because I don't need those. I don't usually have root um, or uh, strongs or Launida numbers. I usually stick with this. I have the manuscript form, the lemma, and then the morphology. And that helps me just analyze what's going on behind the scenes quickly as I'm reading through my English and I just want to get a little bit more information. So that's the inline interlinear and that's available up here uh, when you click the inline interlinear button. So we can turn off the inline interlinear by deselecting it and that will go right back to the way our English text appeared before. Now if you're not a big fan of having the information appear in line actually within the text, we can also click on the interlinear button. So if we click that, it'll pull up open a little ribbon down here at the bottom of your screen where you can see really the same information that we had available in line, only now it's all grouped together in this little ribbon down here at the bottom. Now, right now, mine is only showing the surface text, the manuscript, the lemma, the morphology, and we have a new uh, option down here called the sense. Uh, this is very similar to Launida numbers, or what's called a semantic domain. This is a word's meaning in its given context. So different lemmas will have different senses based upon the context in which they're used. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that, but just wanted to give you a quick highlight. Now if you want to add additional rows to this ribbon, you can right click within the uh, column over here and then select or deselect any options that you would like to see within the ribbon. Now one of the cool things about this little ribbon is that up here in the English text, let's say we wanted to click on the word only Go ahead and click on that word and that will actually move the ribbon to that word and show you the underlying uh, information behind that. So this is a way that you can quickly access information about any Greek or Hebrew word that's based on that English word. So if I want to see the word world, click on world, I can see that this is cosmon or the lemma is cosmos and this is a noun in the accusative singular masculine and the sense of this is the world populace or people in general considered as a whole. Uh, so it just gives you a quick uh, bird's eye view on how you can easily access Greek and Hebrew information right out of the interlinear using your English Bible translation. Now one of the other cool things that we can do when using the reverse interlinear that allows us to leverage this really to its fullest is that we can run original language searches right out of our English text. So I'm going to go ahead and rehide my ribbon. And now I'm interested, let's say I want to find all the places where this Greek lemma for only, um, this is the word monogenes. I can right click on the word only, and then within the context menu I have original language information available to me. I can actually run a search off of the manuscript form, or off of the lemma, or the root, or a particular morphological form, or the Greek strongs, or the launida, or even the sense. I'm going to go ahead and click the Lemma Monogenes option over here on the right. And the way the context menu works is it right to left, so it's a Hebrew reading order as opposed to a Greek or English reading order. So you start on the right, and whatever you select on the right is going to change the options on the left. And notice now that we've selected the Lemma, we've got lots of options available to us. And one of those is to search this resource. So if I click this resource, it's going to automatically search my ESV Bible and display these uh, search results in English for me. And this is an original language search off of the Greek lemma monogenes. Now if I want to see the actual Greek text in my search results as well, I can add a version and let's say I want to see the NA28, just type NA28 and hit enter and now I can see the Greek text right alongside of that and do this comparison. Another thing that we can do right out of our English Bible version using original language text is we can once again right click on the English word, select lemma, and then we can run a Bible word study off of this English word and actually have a full on original language Bible word study. Here we can see our, our Greek lexicons, we can see our translation section, we can see that within the ESV this Greek lemma is translated one way, it's translated as the word only. If we click within the circle, we can actually view all of the instances of this. This is basically a search this resource right here within the Bible word study. We can see how this word is used in Septuagint. The Greek word monogenes is translated from the Hebrew word, yahid, uh, within the Hebrew Bible. 
So we've got all kinds of information available to us on this Greek word, and I'm not going to go into all of this, we'll probably do this in future videos, uh, but I just want to show you all of the possibilities available to us right from within our English Bible version to allow us to access the Greek and Hebrew text uh, that underlies it. Now, if you really enjoyed this information about the River Center Linear, uh, feel free to rewatch this video. Or if you're really interested, you can go up to your library, or rather go to your tools menu, and there's an interactive resource. So click the All Interactive Resources, and then scroll down in your library until you find the interactive resource called the Reverse Interlinear Explorer. We go ahead and launch this. You're going to see that we can see an example of how the Reverse Interlinear works. Well, John 3.16 is one of the verses that's highlighted, so we can click on that, and we can walk step by step through how the reverse interlinear is organized. So we can see we have first the translation text. If we go to the next step, we can see how we've got the manuscript form, and it gives you information about that. We can see the transliteration, so on and so forth. You can keep clicking and viewing information about each of these different levels, so you can figure out what exactly is going on in your reverse interlinear given each piece of information. So hopefully this was helpful. If you like this video, feel free uh, to like uh, down below, um, subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment below. Um, I'm going to be making more videos if I get a lot of people asking for more, or if you want to see something else, please let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks so much.